Drunk driving the fence is a large part of our practice in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. When a client is charged with an offense like this, we have a conversation with them regarding several issues that I want to talk to you about today. The first is probable cause to stop. Like a drug case or a firearms case involving a motor vehicle stop, the issue of drunk driving has to focus initially on whether or not police had probable cause to stop the car. Now, probable cause to stop is usually based on a vehicle code violation, such as um, speeding, running a stop sign, something like that. Uh, it could be also be based on whether or not there was an issue with the car itself, like a broken tail light or registration that was expired or some of the issue with the vehicle that caused the police officer to stop the car. There are some cases where courts will find that police didn't have exactly probable cause but they had a reason to believe that the car or the driver uh, was, was, was something was wrong, some issue, whether it be impairment or a lot of times the officer will testify that he believed the driver could have been falling asleep at the wheel or some other issue, possibly some medical issue, which caused them to stop the car. So maybe the car wasn't necessarily committing an actual violation, but it was just not moving uh, normally, if you will. Now, if police can establish probable cause, the next issue that we're gonna look at is whether or not they can establish probable cause to arrest. Now, in the case of a drunk driving issue, we need to focus on what caused police to believe that you were under the influence of drugs or alcohol or some other narcotic or illegal or legal substance. In this situation, the police officer will have to testify at trial and during a possible pretrial motion with regards to what caused him to believe that you were impaired. And normally the issues that we focused on are sights, smells, and other observation of the officer. Again, police must have probable cause to arrest. In addition, we look at whether or not the officer administered a field sobriety test, which tests motor skills. So going back just a little bit, there's probable cause to stop and probable cause to arrest. After you are arrested, we wanna to talk to you about the chemical test. Now, you should never refuse a chemical test, either a blood or breathalyzer test, in Pennsylvania or New Jersey. This will not in any way help your case. Do not refuse that test. If you administer a blood test or a breathalyzer test, there are several issues that we can go after during a pretrial hearing or at trial. These issues focus on the timing of the test, the test administration, the calibration of the machine, and the qualifications of the person actually giving the test. All these issues are relevant. So when we deal with a DUI, it's not just a conversation based on the arrest. There's a lot going on that we need to discuss with you in the office to really understand what's happening. Finally, your attorney needs to speak to you about your criminal history because this is important. DUIs and DWI in New Jersey are tiered offenses, meaning that they get more serious if you've had previous DUIs. In addition, if you haven't had previous DUIs, but you have prior convictions or prior arrest, that may influence whether or not you are eligible for certain pretrial diversion programs. For more information on DUI and DWI, I encourage you to look at my website. There's a lot of information. There's at least two books on the site that focus on DUI. There's a a number of articles and a few other videos here. I look forward to seeing you in the office.